Today's video is sponsored by Vendu. Hi everybody, welcome back. My name is Lori. I'm a full-time reseller on Poshmark and on eBay. Today, I'm bringing you a new style video. This is the first of many in a series. I am going to be peeling back the layers of all of the clutter I have accumulated as a reseller. And each week I'm going to bring to you this Slow Fashion Friday video where we slow things down. I go through my house, during the course of the week. I identify things that are no longer serving me in my personal life and in my business, and I am starting week by week to declutter with you. I had a video that went out last week sharing my very personal experience with clutter in my personal life and in my business. I stated my intentions in that video, and every week in place of doing a thrift haul, I am going to share with you kind of a reverse haul where I'm going through my stuff and I'm purging items. In today's video, I really feel like we're taking a bucket of sand off the beach. I use that expression all the time when I feel overwhelmed, but one bucket at a time, we are gonna clear this beach out, so to speak, and get my life in order. Everybody is welcome to join me on this decluttering journey. Each week, what I'm gonna do in this series is I'm going to take you through, I'm going to show you what I'm getting rid of, things I decide to keep in my personal and my professional life. In today's video, on the personal side, we're gonna go through some jewelry and my pajama drawer. In my professional life, we are going to go through some shoes and I'm going to show you my process, what I'm getting rid of. Another thing we're gonna cover each week is where I'm at with sales and how many items I actually bought in a week. I'm trying to limit myself to take in 100 less items from the thrift store than I sell. I typically sell about 150 items every month, which means I'm aiming to only buy 50 items a month for my business. That doesn't include the things I'm finding around my house, but these are new items that I'm inviting into my home. This has already been a liberating experience and I'm only one week in. So let's see what we tackled this week and how many things I'm getting out the door. These are some things that I feel like I shuffle around on a daily basis. These earrings, I'm missing one of those and they were just kind of thrifted to begin with. Uh, these coal earrings, I might give those to Angie. These earrings are just super heavy and I never wear them. So we're gonna get rid of those. I mean, I have this section right here. These somewhere, never worn them. Kinda like these, these are like Art Deco. But some of them I can't appreciate because of all the clutter. Um, this is missing the hook. I don't know where these came from, but I'm gonna get rid of those. See where we have one, but we're missing the other. And then over here is even more jewelry. It's, it's honestly just so crazy. This is a super old DKNY watch. I'm probably gonna donate that. And I know some of you might be like, list these things, list them. Saying I'm gonna list certain things is what holds me back sometimes. That's how I end up holding on to things forever. I don't wear these anymore. I mean, literally anybody who watches my channel, you see what I wear, my, my big gold hoops. I decided into this process that this was going to be too overwhelming to be my first thing to tackle. So I move on to my pajamas. In a future video, I'm going to take this entire drawer out and we are going to get rid of everything. That is a picture of one of my best friends from high school. So much junk in here. It was just too much to tackle. These are a bunch of bracelets I got for my 40th birthday. We are going to revisit this another time. Also, the items that I put aside to sell, I did not include at the end of this video with my numbers. I'm just looking on top of my counter here, and this is so funny because this is a Robert, is a JFK ashtray that my cousin gave me years ago that I had planned to sell, and I have yet to sell it. So what I'm gonna do is put all of these things here. These are all things that I'm going to sell and I'm going to find a new home for the jewelry over here because we just move it around every week. This I got at the estate sale. I thought I might keep it. I'm never gonna wear that. I'm gonna continue to go through this stuff. This candle I'm going to donate. Don't need that. Another look that I wanted to clear out really quickly while I'm motivated for it. These are my, this is my pajama drawer. I wear the same stuff. This is a Skims 
nightshirt that I thought I could get this mark out of, but it's paint, so I can't get it out. I'm donating that. Jay used to buy me Victoria's Secrets pajamas every year for Christmas. We stopped doing it because I don't wear them much anymore. And then I was just keeping the pants. Now I literally wear black pajamas, black pants, and that's it. I do like these gingham ones, but I'm gonna get rid of these, get rid of this. What else is in my drawer here? Here's the other piece, maybe I'll keep these. Maybe I'll keep one last pair. I'll keep these because that is the last of the Victoria's Secret PJs. You main these I'm going to get rid of. I just don't wear this style anymore. This is like a sleep shirt. These are LuLaRoe pants that I thought I would wear to bed, but they are like a sauna. So I'm going to sell those, get rid of those. These are anthropology pants that are super cute, but I never wear them. More Victoria's Secret. I'm just going to clear out my pajama drawer because I barely wear any of this stuff. What is this? This is like a little nightgown. I do wear that occasionally. What are you? Oh, I love these Apartment 9 shirts, but I never wear this color. I never wear that color. Not even to bed. What is this? Feast of St. Anthony's Boston. I kind of love that for bed. I'll keep that. More of my Victoria's Secret. And this is kind of just a nice nightgown. See, I didn't even know I had this. This is part of the purging process too, that you realize I have this really nice summer nightgown that I'm sure I thrifted. Um, it's Victoria's Secret in a size large. Like that's really nice. I'm gonna keep that for the hot nights. I think this is that apartment nine, but I'll wear it in that eggplant color. So I'll keep that. So I think I have two sets from Victoria's Secret. I think I'm just going to donate them, honestly, because it's going to be so much to steam these out. It's just not worth it. That's what holds me up. I will sell these anthropology ones because these are really cute. Donate. Donate. Okay, we, we are in it right now, huh, T? Hi, we are. All right, so what we're doing right now is going through all of our boots. None of my shoes are in tote scan and it really sends us on like wild goose chases. So we have discovered a pair of Doc Martens that were not listed because I had sold a very similar pair in a size 11, in a size 10, and I had mistaken these so they were delisted. So new pair of Doc Martens to be listed. Um, these are boys, right? Yep. So those are gonna be listed as well. Neither of these Doc Martens were listed. Mm -hmm. These were donating, or no, we are gonna list these, yeah. these Nettleton. The, I've had these forever, and I've actually even received offers on those shoes from eBay and was afraid to accept the offer because I couldn't find them. So we're going through all of the boots. We're either relisting, listing for the first time, or we're donating. So, so far we're only donating one pair of shoes. These are Zodiac shoes. Um, they're made in Spain. They're they're actually really nice, but the comps aren't great. I don't love men's shoes unless they're kind of a sure thing. And, you know, I am trying to get rid of some stuff. So, yes, I could probably make about 20 bucks on those, but I am going to donate them. And these are on deck. So we're going to look. I'm pretty sure these are both in tote scan. I mean, I'm sure these are both listed, but nothing is tote scanned yet. So we already have the labels on. We're going to fill the boxes and keep on Get going. Get organized, we got this. We're doing it. Okay, just a little update here. Today is all about shoes. All right, these are a pair of Nakona cowboy boots that were unlisted, they were not drafted. The issue was it was pretty difficult to see the size, but they're vintage, they're made in the USA. And look at some of the comps on these shoes. 125, 299, 65, 99, 78. I mean, sitting on this. This is better than thrifting, actually. So we are gonna get these listed. Well, those sold for 39. Um, let me just go to what's available and we'll see what we should maybe price these at. All right, so this is what people have them priced at, but mine look like the taller style. Um, and mine are vintage and they're made in the USA, which maybe a lot of these are. I don't know. I feel like it's any man's game with this, right? I don't yeah. know what we should price these at. Let's do 99 on them and see with um, accept best offer. Only because some of the yeah. sold comps were oh really God. good. These are very similar. Yeah. These might be the same ones. 
and those are listed for 85 yes. and these are listed for 42 so maybe we'll do 89 because that seems like the style we'll do 89 12.99 shipping Shoe update and oh my goodness all of these shoes were unlisted tina grabbed this hulkin bag from the other room i'm like well i don't know if we're gonna need the hulkin bag all unlisted I'm talking Nikes, Doc Martens, Madewell, leather, cowboy boots, you name it, unlisted. Holy cow. Listed real soon, though. I love listing shoes. <laughs> I don't know if these are worth saving. I'm going to look these up. We don't have that that many to donate, but we do have some. And the best thing is we have empty boxes. Empty. So as we these list them, scanned. those are all tote scanned. None of my shoes have ever been tote scanned. So I save that for a rainy day put the sticker on way back when when i was doing the system but never got to them so that's going to change these were boxes that my brother-in-law used for moving but they are so sturdy so as these get listed and drafted they're going to go right into vendu because tina what? loves it and we're putting stuff back here i also took down all of this old scrapbook supplies there and there that i have to go through um, because they were in they were mixed in with my inventory over here which is not a good use of space so we are going to put all boots up here um, that aren't fitting in the boxes and my dehumidifier is still going it's like from 1975 but it still works and we empty it like three times a day and today's going to be a big shoe day i'm just going to wheel the 500 bag <laughs> pound bag of shoes with me like just as tina's walking away just picture the halo around her like ah. <laughs> everyone's like i need a tina i'm like yes i highly recommend 10 out of 10. all right and love luckily she loves to film shoes i love drafting shoes gosh where did we get her <laughs> All right, so excited. Um, we'll do some tallies at the end of this because it's going to be a lot, lots of numbers coming your way. All right, this is a perfect example of how hectic things have been. Um, I just, I needed a box. And so I grabbed this in my dining room and I realized that it was, hey, Lumpy. Oh my gosh, it was my puppy's ashes, Lulu's, which I haven't even opened this. This was sealed in a package and I need to put a picture in here. And this was a letter. I just had a good cry because how could I not open this, you know? She died six months ago, um, but I needed the box. And this box has been in this room for so long. So anyway, my gosh, just every day I'm uncovering more stuff. What are you doing under there? Hey, what'd you get? What did you get? Oh, that's like the peanuts from inside this packing thing. Oh, this dog, he keeps things interesting. Lumpy, hey, you want a toy? You want a toy? Get your toy. He's like, nope, I don't. Okay, now he wants to give it up and it's stuck in his mouth because it's that wet styrofoam that dissolves. There we go. That's much better, right, Lumpy? Is that better? I decided to take everything out of my drawer um, just to get a good look and to fold everything before I put it back in and make sure I want everything. I decided to part with this shirt that I thrifted and I found another pair of LuLaRoe pants that I won't wear. I don't know. I just, I'm trying to simplify. And for me, I end up working from home just about every day. When I wake up sometimes, if I don't shower immediately, I'm wearing my pajamas, which is why I kind of wanted to stick to more basic pants uh, sleep pants. So I kept these black gingham ones. Those are good for summer. These floral ones I wear. These are the ones that I wear all the time. And I just wanted to show you. It's so funny because despite having all this excess, I always go back to the same things. These are gap body pants. They're literally falling apart at the waist. Like the fabric is disintegrating. I've had these for so long and I wear them so frequently. See this? right at the band here it's coming undone uh lumpy has bitten these pants when he was younger and i'd walk i have holes in these i wear these probably four nights a week so looking at this these may be a pair of pants that i would consider replacing because i've actually literally worn these until the fabric started to you know break down uh, that is a testament to how funny this process is because even though I had so much excess in my pajama drawer, and I've done this a few times with my pajama drawer, things just find their way back in there. So I ended up keeping three pairs of pants. I also have one pair of like jogger sleep pants that are in the wash. I kept this one 
um, like the silk, these silk pajamas from Victoria's Secret. Uh, they're just nice if I ever want like a little fancy pair. Uh, these are like the t-shirts that I sleep in and they're all graphic tees that have some sentimental value, but I also sleep in those every night and then, or, or in a tank top. <laughs> Fun fact, this is another thing I wear into the ground. My very favorite tank tops <clears throat> are from Walmart. No boundaries, extra large, rib tank. <laughs> I wear these black ones. Like, they're fading. I wear them so much. Three nightgowns. This is actually kind of a heavier shirt, more like a sweatshirt. I feel like I could take that out of the drawer because it's more loungewear than sleepwear. And then those Apartment 9 shirts that I was talking about. Um, these are just super comfy. I got them at Kohl's a few years ago. I have them in black, white. I got rid of the red one, but I kept the eggplant in the white. And that's it. So now I'm going to place everything back in my drawer, donate these things, and I feel so much better. Everything in the drawer, I put um, the pants that I wear all the time to the right, the night shirts in the center, the graphic tees to the left. And then in the back, I put the one pair of Victoria's Secret pajamas and the three nightgowns. I don't reach for those as much, but on hot nights, um, I will do a nightgown. And then I, I like those that one nice pair of silk pajamas if I need a nice pair of PJs. And that's it. It's, I still have a lot of space in my drawer. Not that I want to fill it, <laughs> but it's nice. It's so much better. Somebody doesn't want to get out of bed this morning. <laughs> Lumpy will not leave his crate in the morning until he gets his belly rubs. And he's been getting them for a while, huh? You still not moving. Wanna go make coffee with mama? <laughs> You're so sleepy, handsome. You're so sleepy. Okay, lazy boy, I'm going to make coffee. We're making progress, huh? A little progress. He's up. He's up. <laughs> For a second. So a little glimpse of what my shoe closet now looks like. What's fantastic about this is I have cleared out the non-inventory shoe stuff. I got rid of all that scrapbooking stuff. I haven't addressed it yet. This tower is right here, but it's not going back in. I am going to end up selling a bunch of my creative memories tools, which will be really nice. These are literally scrap papers from when I used to scrapbook. The majority of this stuff will be either sold or donated, and there's probably a small fraction that I will keep. But what's fantastic about this is this is completely empty. This bin was overflowing. Everything is tote scan now. We have to put a label on this guy because there's only one pair of shoes in there. All of these, this tote scan, also is assigned to these items up here. So this is going to be exclusively shoes and there's a ton of room in the woman's flats and a ton of room in the woman's sneakers. And all of these things have been listed and tote scanned. Let's, let's be transparent here because there's still a lot of work to do. So what we're gonna start having to do now is in here where all of these shoes are, none of these shoes are tote scanned. And we loosely said that like these are sneakers, these are slippers to the left, and I have like clogs and comfort shoes on the wall. We're gonna move a ton of these shoes out. Have all the of these tote scan um, stickers still to use. So we can put some of these either on the wall or maybe in back of each row. We have to think of some system, but we have plenty of skews so that all of the shoes will be in tote scan. Lumpy, what are you, what are you chewing, young man? What are you chewing? Let me give it to mama. What do you have? <laughs> what do you have? Okay, I will get that later. So the shoe mountain is still, you know, very, very much an issue. Uh, but our goal, and we're not going to wait that long on this, our goal is to get every single shoe in tote scan. So I have eyes on it. We'll see if it's listed and we'll go from there. But the closet out here was really problematic because I just didn't know what was listed and what wasn't. So small victory, we still have a lot to do, but you know, one week at a time, I'll give you updates. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm so excited. One of my shoes sold for $44 and they were something that we relisted. I'm gonna talk a little bit about these, um, but they are right here and they were in this 
box and they took me approximately 12 seconds to find because I knew we had just relisted these. I just can't tell you how excited I am. These sold for $44. That just made my day. Oh my goodness. These are just a couple of things that we were going to sell. This Michael Kors purse has some marks on the back of it. So I think we're just gonna donate this. I think it's paint. It could be gum. We tried to get it off and it looks like it might be gum. Uh, I don't know. And then these we thought were American Girl, but they have a slip, a slit in the back and they are not American Girl. And so I think I'm gonna donate both of these. This does have a lot of that gum on here. I'm pr maybe the goo gun will work. This is where I get hung up on things and I'll agonize over whether to keep it and take care of it or just donate it. And today, I think I'm going with donate. All right, I'm back. I'm upstairs. I'm ready to share some numbers with you. I hope that this video so far has illustrated kind of what my process is like. In future videos, I would really like to have more extreme before and afters for you to see. The closet was an example, a small example, and one drawer in my bedroom was a small example, but I really feel like that's the process that I have to make. Like I said, it's, it felt like it was just a bucket of sand off of the beach because I know how much more I have, but what I've learned about myself um, because I follow a lot of minimalist creators on YouTube and there's this one woman, she's called the Minimalist Mom and she refers to herself as an onion peeler and I really related to that. So some people will tack one room at a time or one closet and be like, I'm not leaving until this is all done. I get kind of overwhelmed with that and I think where I have so many things that need to go now, I can just do a real easy walkthrough and I feel like in every single room I can find something that's going to go. So I think for me, it's very easy to grab the low lying fruit as I call it, the stuff that's a no brainer, like that's gonna go, that's gonna go. And there are certain things that are gonna be harder for me that will probably turn up later in this series. So I'm going to peel back the layers. I will definitely have some sort of a before and after for you because as a viewer, I myself love a good before and after. And I and it's it's also nice for me to just complete a task. So I'm going to try to focus on those more, but you will see my process and how we do it. So let's talk about some numbers because this is the stuff that for me is really gratifying to be recording this stuff and actually have a number that's measurable to encourage me each week to continue to purge. All right, I had to grab my notebook um, to share with you some numbers. I think what got me most excited this week was the fact that Tina and I tackled that closet and we went through shoes. Um, I think what surprised me was that this has been such a daunting task and every time I look in that closet, I was overwhelmed. I would rifle through those bins all the time, not really knowing if something I was looking for was in there. As I showed you in the basement, as much as it looks like a mess in my studio, and it is a mess, there is at least some little system in the studio where I have like sneakers and slippers in that closet under the staircase. And up against the wall are like the comfort shoes in that area. And then I have heels on the other side of the room. There's a little bit of order within the chaos, but very little. That closet was really just an abyss, and I, I swear when you like close a door to something, you forget about it. So it was really fun to go through that, and I use the word fun because we were having a good time, and we couldn't believe how quickly we went through it. So I was on my computer, Tina would hold up a pair of shoes, I would first look in Vendu and see if it was listed in Vendu. When I first started with Vendu many years ago, I did not pull over all of my inventory, which was a bit of a mistake. So sometimes when I sell an item, it's not showing up in Vendu because I haven't imported it. But what that tells me is if it's not in Vendu, it's really old because I think I imported everything in 2020. So if something's not showing up in Vendu, it means it's before 2020 and I started reselling in 2018. Um, so first I would look in Vendu. If the item wasn't in Vendu, I would then look in Poshmark and I would search in my own closet and type in the brand, see if it would pop up. If it was there, I would delist it and then relist it through Poshmark. So you make a copy of it in Poshmark and then I would relist it so it would pop to the top of my feed, delete the old item, make some changes, maybe add some keywords to the title, maybe change the pricing, change my cover photo, whatever it was. Then once it was at the top of my feed in Poshmark, I would then import it from Vendu. So 
it was now in Vendu. So it was like a brand new listing. It had new pictures, new keywords. It was in Poshmark and then I would cross list it to eBay. And then Tina would take a photo of it and we would put it in tote scan. So that was the process. If it wasn't in Poshmark or in Vendu or in eBay, that means it was unlisted. It was essentially in a death pile that I didn't realize I had. I know I'm throwing a lot of information out at you, but hopefully as the weeks go on, I find a rhythm with these videos and I'm a little bit more concise. I was nervous about this video because it was my first one. We relisted five items, which means they were in Poshmark, but they probably weren't in Vendu and they were over three years old. So I delisted and relisted them. And then I sold a pair of those Adidas sneakers. That was from a D-list and relist. There were five pairs that we donated and I'll just run through them really quickly with you. These, I saw some comps on these for like $12, $15 and I find that the sole is really worn and when it comes to running shoes, if the sole is really worn, I just think it, it takes away from the value. These were probably a bins pickup. Getting rid of those. These are in great condition. They're Steve Madden's. They were mine. Um, which means they're probably an eight and a half, but I can't find the size tag on them anywhere. And when I say these could single-handedly be the most uncomfortable shoes I have ever owned, I couldn't sell these to anyone else because I found them to be so uncomfortable. I did wear them without socks, but so I'm donating those. These Toms, I must have picked these up at the bins. They were unlisted. They're not getting listed. Donated. Um, these were some loafers by Cynthia Rowley. They're not in bad condition. They're size nine and a half. The comps weren't fantastic and we had a bunch of shoes. See, this is where it's not good for me to revisit items I've decided to donate because right now I'm looking at these and I'm thinking these are in really good condition. I could probably list them, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm gonna get rid of them. I might give them to my friend, Marguerite. We're going out today. I think this is her size and her style. I'm gonna give them to Marguerite and and I'll feel better. And then I showed you those Zodiac shoes that I'm donating. So those were the only shoes that we donated. So I think that was five pairs of shoes. We relisted five, but there were 22 pairs that were unlisted, that were worthy of being listed. We're talking a couple pairs of Uggs, a couple pairs of Doc Martens. I just couldn't believe it. And Tina and I were like, this is insane. So not only were they relisted, but they're now all in tote scan. So I showed you how the system is coming together. I did not need to go thrifting. I just needed to go to my basement. So as far as thrifting goes, let's talk about what was actually brought into my home. I wanna give a shout out to today's sponsor, Vendu. You'll hear me talk a lot about Vendu today. They are a cross-listing service that I've been using for several years now. They are the backbone to streamlining my business. Business. I use Vendu as my hub and I create all of my listings in Vendu. They now have this amazing feature. They've partnered with Photo Room and you can remove the background to your photos. That is a step we used to do separately and now it's all done within the platform of Vendu. I can't say enough about this company. And right now, as I'm purging through everything, Vendu is more meaningful than ever to me because it is where I look to see where the order is. It tells me how many items I've sold. It shows me if they're selling on eBay or if they're selling on Poshmark. It gives me my average selling price, the brands that are doing well. There are all sorts of analytics that they help me with as well as keeping my inventory organized. You can add SKU numbers that can let you know where your items are, which is obviously a very important thing for me. I use Vendu's SKU number in addition to the tote scan because it is just a way of double checking myself. So if for some reason it's not in tote scan, I always go into Vendu, look at the SKU number. That is a new thing that we started adding, so it's not on all of our inventory, but it's one of our goals to get to that. If you wanna give Vendu a try, click the link in my description. You can save 25% off your first month of service. This service pays for itself. Once you get everything streamlined and you can start cross-posting, I'm really happy to report that I am over 800 items listed on eBay. For a very long time, I was struggling to even get to 500. The past 31 days, I've sold $1,600 on eBay. And if you've been following me, you know I've struggled for a long time to even get to $1,000 on eBay. So thank you so much to Vendu. Okay, my friend Marguerite is here. She bought a new house. We're going to see the new house. So I'm gonna hop out. I'm gonna come back in a little while. My makeup's probably gonna be a little bit different and we're gonna wrap things up. Hi. <laughs> okay, I'm back. 
It has literally been 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2. It's been about five hours. I had a fantastic day with my good friend Marguerite. I'm happy I had that break because it gave me some time to think about all of the things I listed this month. Here's what I find fascinating. Um, I in these this, these were quick numbers. I might be off by like one or two, but you will get a clear picture of all of the shoes that we went through. I relisted like five or six pairs, and from what I counted, there were 27 pairs in total in that pile, which means 22 were unlisted. I donated five. Big picture. 27 pairs of shoes were unaccounted for taking up space in that closet just living there and weren't listed i probably if you had asked me i might have said oh probably four or five aren't listed that are in there i would have never said 27 items weren't listed which is just crazy when i went through my own closet you got a little snippet of it but i also pulled some things that i think i shared in my previous video like i said as these videos progress i'll try to be a little bit more systematic about what i'm sharing with you but i went to my drafts in vendu and i've also looked at the items that i listed and to my best guess from a quick count I pulled 15 items from my own closet that I listed. There were two pairs of pants from my husband's closet. I listed three American Girl item SKUs, but one of those items I bought specifically to resell, they were these little, um, they were like emoji shoes that I got for a really good deal. I had nine pairs of those, new in box. So that's a multi-quantity listing, which you can also do in Vendu, which is really nice. That, that nice, that's like a newer feature. Three American Girl things, you know, plus eight additional of that one SKU if you want to add that. I had a longer burger basket that I had given to Angelina years ago. It was limited edition and it was um, for breast cancer. So it was lined with like a little pink toile piece. We listed that as well. So one hard good. The pile that was gifted to me by Rocco's friend's mom, I gave one shirt to Tina. I donated about half the bag. I didn't even show those on camera. I just donated those. One, I found a little hole. It was an Ann Taylor dress I was going to list, but I found a little hole. So I listed nine items. My mom gave me two items. One is a draft right now. We listed the Marlboro Man denim jacket. I only purchased six items so far this month, and that was from the Savers haul that I shared with you in a previous video, in my last Ship and Shop video. Of those six items, three items have already sold. So I only personally purchased six items. However, 62 items were added to my inventory to Vendu, which blows my mind. So between the nine items that Rocco's friend's mom, Patty, gave me, the six items that I purchased, the one, the, one of the items for my dad is listed, the other one is drafted, 15 items from my own closet, two pairs of pants from Jay, hard good from Angie, the American Girl items that I pulled, and then the 22 new pairs of shoes that were technically in my death pile and I didn't know it, plus the five that I relisted. I'm not even counting the five relists. 62 items were added. So if you take away the six that I contributed to that by purchasing, that means that 56 items were just here just here. When I look at the numbers like this, it actually blows my mind. This is why I don't need to go thrifting. And this doesn't include the things that I got rid of. So just to show you for reference, this is one of the bags that I've donated. I also have all of those journaling supplies downstairs that I'm going to donate. This is the bag of shoes that I'm going to donate. And when I went through the bag from Patty that was given to me, that I already dropped off at Savers. So I'm talking like probably two or three bags of things that I got rid of, 56 items that were listed. I've done all right with sales so far this month too. So I had originally said that I average 150 sales per month. You guys are gonna get sick of hearing me go over these details, but so far this month on Poshmark, I have sold 58 units. A lot of those were bundles. I've sold 11 items on eBay. So I'm filming this on August 11th. So I'm at 69 items sold in 11 days. My average amount of items that I'm moving per day currently is 6.27 items. If that remains consistent through the end of the month, if I keep that up by September 30th, I will 
move 188 items if I continue on this trajectory that I'm at. My sales so far this month on the 58 items sold on Poshmark, $1,754. I actually had a $45 sale while I was on lunch with Mark, but I'm not counting that. $646.73 on the 11 items that were sold on eBay. I did have one big sale. I bought this Barbie dress when I was with my girlfriend Kim in Boston. Remember, I wasn't really impressed by the label, but we really liked the style. Kim found it for me. We were looking for Barbie-inspired dresses. So this dress sold for $195 on eBay in less than a week. So that really boosted up my average selling price on eBay. I paid seven or eight dollars for that dress. That was a huge score and Kim found it. It was fantastic. So, so far this month I've sold $2,473. So, so far so good. We are on track. But what I'm finding already week one is I'm adding a lot more items to my inventory than I'm buying. So even though my idea was I'll sell 150 items, I'll only bring 50 into the house. I'm still going to stick to that, but my inventory number I don't think is going to go down as I had hoped, at least in these initial weeks when I'm finding so many things around my house. So it could take me a little bit longer or maybe I'll pull more and sell them live or whatever, but you guys are doing this with me real time. So every week we're gonna go through stuff, we're gonna look at the numbers. So that was it, I've only purchased six items so far in the month of August. This is where I'm at so far, what do you guys think? I've donated a lot, I've sold a lot, I'm accepting a lot of offers which I think is just making the algorithm happy and I'm getting a lot of offers coming in. I'm feeling really good. I have a long, long way to go. This is a big mountain, but I'm giving myself a year and I appreciate you guys so much for following along this journey. So many people shared your personal stories in my last video and I want you to know how much it meant to me. I have not responded to every message because I think I have close to 500 messages on that video. I was not expecting that, but it just really, made me feel good about doing this. It made me feel good about finally just breaking the pattern of my videos here on YouTube and going into the series of getting rid of stuff instead of always bringing stuff in. And when I was taking the picture for the thumbnail, I don't know what I'll end up with because I usually take a variety, but I was holding these bags and I thought to myself, you know, usually I'm like, these bags are full of stuff that I just bought for my inventory. And now it's like, these bags are full of stuff and they are leaving my house. And that makes me feel so much better. It's just a totally different way of thinking. Now, every time I look at an offer, I think that's one step closer to my goal. Instead of looking at it like, ah, uh, I wanted $40 for that, not 25. I'm looking at it like that's one more thing that's out of my house. That's one more sale that's gonna contribute to the 150 items that I'm aiming for every month. Another goal that I have is I'm trying to hit $200 in sales per day, that's a stretch for me, but that is just a sales goal. Right now, I'm more interested in the number of items leaving my house than even the sales that I'm making. But sometimes I'll look at my numbers for the day and be like, oh, I'm at like 125. So if I take this $30 offer on something that I wanted to get 50 or 60 for, that's gonna get me that much closer to my $200 goal. So having real numbers that I'm aiming for, 150 out the door every month, the not bringing in more than 50 that I purchase a month and hitting $200 in sales every day, those goals are really helping to keep me focused. I may not reach any of them, I may exceed some, I don't know where I'm gonna land, but they're really helping me. I'm not a very technical numbers driven person, but I think that's how I ended up in the predicament that I'm in. Um, I like everything. I live in the gray area. I'm not a very black and white person, but this exercise is really helping me see things clearly. So thank you guys so much for coming along for the ride. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to come along for the purging, decluttering journey, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss an upload. I'll be back next Friday with another Slow Fashion Friday video. Oh, and one thing I forgot. One other component to these videos that I forgot to include is going to be called my hidden gem. And that's gonna be an item that I uncovered during my decluttering for the week that I forgot I had. So this week, I uncovered this adorable black linen 
pair of overalls that I absolutely love. I put them on and I was like, oh my gosh, I forgot about these. And so I wore them two days this week and I have a little clip of me wearing them. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'll be back soon with another video. Thank you guys so much for being here and have a fantastic weekend. Love you guys, bye. If you wanna give Vendu a try, be sure to click the link in my description and save 25% off your first month of service. You will love it. Say bye, Lumpy.